Hi everyone, this is Hope Yoder for Embellish Maker Fundamental Video 3. In this video, we're going to talk about the File section and the Zoom or View section. So let's go ahead and get started. When you open your software, this screen pops up where you can have some useful information if you need help with your software, something's not working right, you need the activation code, any of those things, support is where you'll click. For now, we'll close this. Let's travel um, up in this section. Here you have options to collapse everything so that it's nice and tidy and you only see what you want to expand. So if I wanted to see file, or view, I could just expand those two items. If I don't want to see any expansion, I'll click on the minus. If I want to open every single uh, area here, every section, I'll click on the plus to expand all, and I will scroll down so that I can see all of my functions. If I want this to go away so I have more open area, and the properties and the sequence to go away, I can hide that and now I have a huge area to play with. For now, we'll open these back up. I'm going to collapse all and just open file for now. So in this section, you have new to open a new page. Let's click on that. And then if I'd like to bring an embroidery design into the program, I can click on Open Design. Here I'm working in my new Roses and Arrows embroidery collection that matches my Roses and Arrow fabric. When you click on these, you will see all the pretty designs. Convert to Outlines. You'll only want to check this if you're wanting to delete stitches inside of a color. This opens up the design and gives you a lot more options. Generally, you're not going to convert to outlines, so we're gonna leave that unchecked. I'm going to open the design. In this area, here I have some shortcuts. All of these icons are also found over in the left side of the screen. We tried to put the most commonly used shortcuts right up here so it wasn't obtrusive to your screen view. Let's change this to 3D. Now, if I close this window and this window, you can see how you would have a nice big area to work from. Let's open this back up and we'll open this. I'm going to zoom out by coming over and selecting the negative. This design or this icon is so that we can save the design. Now I'm not going to save it because it hasn't had any changes made to it, but if you've made changes, you'll want to change it first as a WAF file. That's the native editable file in all of RNK's programs. So always save the WAF file by clicking Save, and then once you've done that, come back in and then save the file to the embroidery format that your machine requires to sew. The next icon has a letter um, N that's orange. Now you may not see this. Any icon that has an orange N means that I have Craft and Cut software loaded onto this same computer and it opens and functions completely inside of Embellish Maker. That makes me super excited. I'm gonna talk about that later on in the fundamental videos, but for right now, we'll skip over this. Again, if you don't see this icon, it's because you don't own Craft & Cut. Now this next screen is our print preview window. Let's click on that to show you the different options. In this, the first thing that I wanna show you is that you have more than one page. This is page one of four, and you can see that down here. To get to the next page, we want to click on the next page icon. That is page two, that is page three, that is page four. 
Now notice this embroidery or this cutting mat. Let me close this out. And before I started filming the video, I was in the view section and I had turned on my cutting mat. So I want to make sure that I turn that off. We'll close this out for now. Let me zoom in again. So that is the print preview window. If I was to select everything and go back to print preview, you can see that I have some options here. Now, are you wondering where everything is? Let me show you why you're seeing the thick crosshairs. In the settings window, you get to control what you want to see. For instance, I have the cutting mat checked. If I unselect that, it goes away. Let's go back into the settings. I also have hoop checked. So if I uncheck hoop and then check OK, that goes away. I like to have thick crosshairs. Sometimes I'm going to print this template onto my embellish printable template material and I like the thick crosshairs. If you don't want thick, uncheck them. Notice they're thinner. If you don't want them at all, then you can uncheck this again. Now I want the design colors to show up and I would probably put a title in there. And for now, we'll just put something fun. Now, this is probably more what you're used to. Let's go down and we can see each segment. Back into settings, so you have total control of this. If you don't want to see all of these different settings, then you can print this in one page. Always leave print actual size checked if you're going to use this for a template and you need it to be the exact size. Now you can see I don't have any other pages. There's just one page and we know that because it says page one. It also tells us it's at 100%. And then when you're ready and you have it just like you want, you can go ahead and print the template. We'll close that out for now. Let me zoom in. For this next section, we have a cut icon. And what that does is it's going to delete part of your design and save it to the computer clipboard. For instance, let's say we don't want any of the green. I'm going to select the green and I can come under the file window and cut it. And notice all the green is gone. Now if I open a new page, and I right click, I see the word paste, or we can jump over to this icon and paste that green back in. Down on the bottom are your different window tabs. Let me go back to the original design and let me just paste this in and then that puts it back. But what you need to recognize is it put it back into the very last position, but it was first. So anytime you cut a segment and you copy it, excuse me, you paste it back in, it's always going to throw it to the very bottom sequence. So be careful of that. I can right click and move this to the first segment. Right now it's the last and I can move it back up to the first and that's how I would want it. So we have a copy icon. If I wanted to duplicate all of the um, second color, I can copy this. And if I come into a new screen, I can use this icon to paste or I can right click to paste. So there I've got my icon selected. Now let me zoom in to this so you can see it. Also, here's a little tip. Notice all of these little icons around the box. These are shortcuts. If you wanted to copy an object, let's do this first by copying. And it actually is going to take a copy and now I'm going to paste it on top of 
itself. Notice it added two in this area. And let me change one to a different color. Let's change that to green so you can see it. What I want you to see is it paste directly on top of the first object. And sometimes I'm unaware that it's pasted itself right on top. So if I select the second copy, and instead of using the copy and paste here, I can use this duplicate icon or copy and paste icon shortcut. When I click this, the advantage is if we zoom in, so you can take a quick look at the icon. I love that it's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to copy and paste off center. So it's not going to paste right on top of itself. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see what happened. I got a different color. We'll change that to blue. And then if I move this one, you see the difference of what happens. Let me get rid of this screen. I don't want to save this. And then let's go back to this original screen. <coughs> Excuse me. This is my undo and redo. For instance, let's say I copied the, or I pa pasted this to the very bottom, and I didn't mean to. I can select undo or redo. So these are the items that are in the file menu. One more thing I want to show you, let me zoom out. If you wanted to add a second design to the same screen, you would come under File and Merge Stitch File. If you select Open, it's going to open in a new window. If you wanted to add a second design, you would choose Merge Stitch File. And let's come back to the Roses and Arrows design. Oops, wrong one. Let's see here. We'll scroll over and we'll do roses and arrows. And let's just say if I wanted to add this circle here, I'm going to bring this in and I could merge this design with the rose design and create my own collage. Now, when a design comes in, it is automatically grouped. So to ungroup it, you can right click and ungroup. So that's how you merge a stitch file. I'm going to undo this and go back to just, and the undo is pretty much unlimited. That's a good thing. Now I'm going to close the file section and we're going to talk about the view section. The first icon is going to turn on the 3D mode or off. Sometimes you'll want to see the stitches underneath and working outside of the 3D is easier to view. The next icon is the backdrop tool. Let me zoom out and a backdrop tool is where you can open an image that's not stitches, it's just here's a PNG or here's the, um, a JPEG. So if I open a backdrop, it isn't stitches, it's just an image that maybe I want to digitize stitches over. And we'll talk about that in a future video. For now, I'm going to go back into my file and undo. Notice the undo shortcut is here as well. And now I can get back to where I was. We close the file window. The second, and let me, here's a shortcut to bring it full screen. Let me talk about this icon. This is your grid. And a lot of times I work without a grid, but you may want grid. So you can turn it on and off by using this feature. To get to the grid settings to change the size of the box or the colors, you can come under Tools, Preferences, and in the grid section, 
Here are all your different options. If you want snap to grid, show grid as dots or as solid lines, you can change all of those settings. If I want my grid lines to be darker, closer together, this is where all your settings are. I'm going to go back to dashed lines. So turn the grid on or off. Next icon is I can show my hoop size. And this is going to be just your standard hoop. Now, what if you wanted to change it? This will be a 100 by 100 millimeter hoop. Now the design up here at the very top is going to show you how many colors are in the design, how many stitches, the millimeter size, or height and width. And what if you wanted this in inches? Simply hover your mouse over the toolbar, right click, and you can change that to inches. Now what if I wanted to put this in a 5x7 hoop? The next icon allows me to select my hoop size and the format. So I can select from all of the drop-down menus. So we'll go to a 5x7 is a 180 by 130 frame. I can choose multi-needle or not a multi-needle. And when I select OK, I'm not sure what happened there. It went back to the default, the smallest hoop, once I deselected multi-needle. Let me change that again. And there's my 5x7 hoop. You can also add your own hoop sizes. So if I wanted to create a new one, I could name it and I could put the measurements here. So if we don't have the common hoops uh, for your size of the machine, go ahead and create your own. You can also rotate the hoop by 90 degrees. If I want to turn the hoop off, I simply select this icon again. This is to uh, remove the backdrop tool. So again, if I load my backdrop in here and I have it visible, I can just turn it off and hide it by selecting this icon. This will bring it up again. This will turn it off. The next icon is the background color, and this is kind of fun. Let's go ahead and turn um, this on. I have color selected, so I can choose from any color that I want. So if I wanted to make this icon a different color, or excuse me, the backdrop, you can see what happens there. Let me go back to white. Whoops, it's not changing the background color. I apologize. We're going to go back to color. And then I'll just select white again. But check this out. You can put fabric as your backdrop. So I'm going to select fabric. And you can import your own fabric. And we'll have videos on that later. We've got a lot of fabric already in the system. But here are the top colors are my roses and arrows fabric from Blank Quilting Corporation. And they happen to match um, the roses and arrows designs that we're working with. So for instance, if I was going to embroider these roses on this fabric, I might want to see what that looks like. And there we've got fabric background. Let me put the hoop back in so you can see with or without a hoop. This would be really helpful in um, designing what happened. I need to undo this because it wasn't grouped. So let's select undo, and now I'll select all items, right click, and left click on group. So if I wanted to merge another file inside of here, remember I would go to file, merge stitch file, and then pull up whatever design I wish. These last two icons are not going to be available to you unless you own Craft and Cut software. The letter N for Craft in Cut means that I own Craft and Cut software and it's loaded on this computer. Just a sneak peek, since I do, if I wanted a cutting mat to be shown, I could just actually show my cutting mat, which is kind of cool because now I have a new option that's not available in Craft and Cut and I can show what my fabric might look like on the mat. So we'll turn that off. 
and we'll turn the hoop back on. So this is an overview of using all of the icons inside of the file and view. Stay tuned for fundamentals video number four.